not that it looks bad. I mean, it's pretty smooth. So we're gonna stick with one. Um, now, you might wanna convert this, right click on the object, and convert to, and convert this to an editable poly. This will just simply convert it all to a editable poly. With, you know, uh, the ability to edit the vertices, edges, border, polygons, and element. Um, should we maybe do something with that later? Uh, for, for instance, if you go in here and toggle element, you can change the position, scale, and, and rotation of each letter. If you might want to create an animation where the letters should fall down like this, boom, or something like that. You can animate that if you want to. So yeah. Now when we have our object, um, I think we're gonna need to to rotate this object. Uh, keep in mind when rotating this button right here, uh, we're gonna rotate it, rotate it by the x axis 90 degrees. You can do it manually here, or you can just simply drag here. But as you can see, it's really really not that easy to hit exactly 90 degrees. What you can do is you can toggle the angle snap toggle. You can just drag up to 90% here. And um, you can always use the tools right here to just manually type in the directions. So yeah. Now we have our object centered exactly in the center of their scene and it's positioned properly and her mesh smooth or turbo smooth is um, finished. Now what you can do is you can add some background and some some ground to this. Go ahead and go into standard primitives geometry, add a plane. Plane is used a lot for creating surface such as water, grass and dust and pretty much a flat ground. It doesn't have anything else on it, it's just a flat plane. I'm gonna scale this up to about the same size as my text. Click G on your keyboard to toggle off the grid. Just click toggle that with the G keyboard. G on the key. On your keyboard. <laughs> um, now, if you click F4 to toggle the edges faces here, F4 on the keyboard, you can see the polygons on our object. I'm going to increase those to, if you select the plane and go to modify, I'm going to increase that to 6. Now go ahead and right click, convert, actually I'm going to manually type in the length and the width to 500 by 500, so that we know that this is completely a square. Now with the 6 segments by the length and the width, we're going to convert this to an editable poly. Open the editable poly, go to polygon and just select all this. Start with holding down control and selecting the 4 in the middle. And you can use the growl, growl, grow, grow. It's, it's, it's spelled grow, it's in growl, growl, grow. Just press the grow button a couple of times until you've selected all the, all the polygons here. Now scroll down to edit polygons. Here you can uh, edit and, and, and create and morph and transform and, and you know uh, do different things with polygons, vertices and stuff like that. Right now we're working with the polygon. Now I want you to inset. If you click inset you can just drag with your mouse. But right now we're gonna click this button right here, settings. And we're gonna do this a little bit more in depth. Um, insert type, if you do it by group, if you do something by group, it will all, all of the selected items, vertices, polygons, edges, you know, polygons, whatever, they will be treated as one. That means that they will be treated as one, as you can see, it, it is, it's going to be treated as one item. If you do by polygon, however, you can see that it, 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 this polygon doesn't care about the other ones. They're all by themselves. So it's gonna be inset type by polygon. Inset amount is probably about 76 centimeters, just off the center. 
because we're going to create tiles here. That's my plan. Go ahead and click OK. Now click while having still selected the insets, the inner parts. Extrude. Oops. That's not what I was going to do. Click Extrude by Polygon. Extrude. Oh, sorry. Cancel that. Sorry. If you did that, you can go ahead and Control Z or Edit uh, Undo. We're going to use the bevel one. So go ahead and click the settings on the bevel. By Polygon. Height should be something about 3 centimeters. Inline amount about minus one centimeter. Click OK and just deselect that. As you can see, it kind of look like look like tiles. Now, uh, to just create some realistic look on this, we're gonna control and select some random, totally random uh, parts of this uh, tiles. Select one of these and rotate them just a little bit. You can turn off the angle snap toggle to just slightly rotate it. About two centimeters, or two degrees. Now, select some other ones. Rotate them the other way. About two or three centimeters, like that. Now our plane, our ground, is finished, uh, at least the geometry and the shape of it is. And you can tell by the realistic randomness of the placings on this small little rotation of these creates a little bit more interesting effect. Now it's time to add some, uh, some uh, materials to our scene, to our objects. We're going to add some material to our logo, as well as our ground, which is our, which are tiles. We're going to start with uh, the tiles. Go ahead and click M on your keyboard, or Rendering Material Editor. And here is where you create your materials. Go ahead on the first one, select the first one right here, and re rename that to Tiles Mat. I always type Mat for Material. It Mat stands for Material. Um, I'm going to select the, our tiles here and go into modify and name these tiles so that we can know what we are working with and you can easily see what are what and which are which. Now, on the first here, in our tiles mat, go ahead and increase the specular level to about, you can open this up here and just scale it up so you can see. These tiles should have a speckle level of something about 50. Kind of glossy, about 30 glossiness. Now, let's add a diffuse channel. Go ahead and click this box on the diffuse. And let's add... We can go to Material Editor, or we can... Let's create our own. Let's go to New, All, and choose the Noise one. Um, on the first one, of course, select Fractal. Uh, really nice to have Fractal. We can easily just choose a color for this. Choose a brown color. The other one, maybe some kind of dark. Something like that. Now if you go ahead and copy our diffuse, go into maps and uh, apply the copied noise map to our bump. Right click, paste, instance. We want to paste an instance. The difference be between pasting a copy is that a copy is a new version of the original copy. The instance, however, is, well, an instance. What this does is if, if I go into the diffuse channel here, or here, you know, it's the same diffuse here, diffuse, uh, 